safe, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. As always, I appreciate everybody joining us here every weekday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific. We're live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, our website, and our apps. And I always remind people, download that Fox 12 Oregon app. Great way to watch all the segments that we get to have on here and, uh, of course, everything else that we have going here at Fox 12 Oregon. But today we're talking about Intel right now. And, and in specifically, I'm going to get that out, uh, a brand new machine that they have that is actually going to hopefully revolutionize the way that chips are made. So this is out there at the Hillsborough facility. We got to speak to Courtney Martin about this. And so this first part of the interview is going to be going into kind of the bigger, uh, bigger context, the general idea of what this is going to be able to do. And then after that, we're going to go into the science a little bit more. So don't worry, we'll be talking about this because there's a laser that can reportedly heat things up to 40 times the surface of the sun temperature. So pretty amazing stuff. We've got that here for you. So uh, let's start off, though, with this interview with Courtney from Intel. So good to have you on here to talk about this. Obviously very exciting for Intel, but exciting for way beyond that as well. You know, of just the possibilities and ramifications of this new system. I mean, there's so much involved with it. I was looking at some of the facts here that it was, uh, I believe it was 250 crates in 43 freight containers to bring this in in multiple cargo planes, semi-trucks. So even just shipping it is a big production. Yeah. But really excited to talk about this. And, you know, for everybody out there who doesn't work at Intel, could you help us just get a little bit of the backstory and understanding of what the, uh, how this all started, I guess, in starting getting this new system? Sure. Well, uh, to start for some context, our operations here in Oregon, we've been investing in the state for 50 years. And across our four campus locations, we have more than 23,000 employees. It's our largest site in the world, still our largest concentration of talent and facilities. And it's also home to Intel's research and development group. Um, in our technology development side, which does all of the early phase research. Um, we bring new process technologies to life here for the first time. They go through thousands of steps in manufacturing. We work out the kinks, the yields, we get them to high volume manufacturing, and then they go out into our global network of factories and assembly and test facilities around the world. And so this high NA, oh, go ahead, sorry, Greg. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Continue, yeah. That's I was going to say the high. There's so many people that are. Yeah. <laughs> so this high NA EUV tool is really um, a huge milestone in our journey at Intel to regain process technology leadership. We've been on a journey over the past couple of years since Pat Gelsinger came back to Intel in 2021. He declared we are going to regain technology leadership. We're going to deliver five new process nodes in four years. And the high NA is enabling the technology that will even come after that and to support the future generations. And so the fact that this tool in hundreds of parts, hundreds of crates made the long journey to Oregon. Um, it arrived in uh, end of December, January timeframe, and it's now assembled in the Gordon Moore Park, Ronler Acres, our D1X factory as the only um, production tool of high NA in the world. And so Intel is super excited to be the one to have that uh, in our home and build on that integration to our technology roadmap. And that roadmap that you mentioned there before too of, of regaining or reestablishing you know, the place in the chip world. So this is one of those, one of those steps that's, that's gonna be able to do that. Yeah, and so, I mean, this tool, as you mentioned, and I know you've seen the video and there's some fun facts in there that just blow your mind around the lasers and from the moon and hitting a dime on the earth and it's crazy, uh, is one of the most sophisticated engineering tools in the world. And so when we make a semiconductor or a, you know, a chip, there is a, we start with a blank silicon wafer, you know, a big round wafer, and we pattern onto that. And as I mentioned, it goes through thousands of steps. And what this tool does, this high NA UV tool, it put that, puts down the pattern on that chip. And so with this next generation of technology, next advancement in that technology, we can make those even smaller and do it more efficiently. 
And what are the advantages of making that smaller? And I mean, the efficient side, I guess that, that does make sense a lot, but as far as getting yeah. smaller, what are the advantages there? Yeah, so think about a semiconductor, right? It's basically the brains of all of our modern electronic devices. Um, you know, we often refer to it as a computer chip, but there's many types of semiconductors, including the um, central processing unit or the chipset or memory or storage, but they all at the end of the day go into powering our modern society. Think of how many chips are in all the equipment we're looking at here, how many times you've interacted today, whether through communications or transportation, uh, your healthcare, your work, uh, you name it, right? And so the smaller and more efficient that those chips can get really enables the utilization of that in more and more technologies that can improve you know, our daily life. So taking a look at, you know, at the machine itself, and it's very, very big out there. So we're talking about making these really small chips, but it takes a very large machine to do that, as we mentioned of how many different uh, ways this had to be shipped in. So can you give us just a little more, more idea of that side of things, as far as the machine itself? Yes. And machine, yes. machine may be the wrong word, too. Yeah, no, it's a good it's a good choice of words. And um, given that our site here in Oregon is home to our research and development, we do what, what our um, construction team refers to as continuous conversion. So we're always looking at what type of facilities are needed, what's the space layout to support the tools that enable the next generation technology. And so as you can imagine, you know, when we built the buildings we had, we weren't you know, we didn't know yet what this tool looks like. And so, um, you know, we constantly have hundreds of trades workers out on site that go and do the work to support um, the additional electrical work that's needed, the piping that's needed to support these next generation tools and facilitate that installation in our campus. And so it really does have even just economic ramifications beyond just the fact that Intel has this there and is going to be building the chips. I mean, this is infrastructure that's needed to support that that's done here in the community. You bet. And so, as I mentioned, we have more than 23,000 employees directly for Intel in the region. But we know that for every job at Intel, there's at least another five jobs indirectly supported in the economy. So that's more than 100,000 jobs in the region. We have a network of more than 500 direct suppliers in the state alone. And think of how many of those have their own you know, networks of sub suppliers. Um, the delivery of this tool and the creation of this tool was a decades long partnership with ASML. And so mm. really it's a partnership with the trades, with our community partners, with the suppliers, right? All those collaborations go into making this possible. And so much of that network exists here in Oregon as part of that Silicon Forest out in Washington County. I love it. I mean, it's, it's so many, so many amazing things coming out of this. And just uh, one more, one more thing talking about the machine too. I, I, from what I understand, this is the first time in the world that this is being utilized? Correct, correct. Intel's received the first production tool of this. The only other one was at ASML, the supplier. And so, in addition to all the uh, all the all the ways this is going to affect you know local economies, and in fact, that Intel's tied in, you know, not only employees but everybody else um, associated with that. Looking at this for the future, so with a, with a system like this, with a machine like this, the the high NV, how is this going to set up Intel for going into the future? And are we talking about years and decades into the future, and, and the rapid advance yeah. you'll be able to make with this? Yeah, so this um, technology will first be deployed with a, a technology that we're referring to as 14A. That would be in the next couple of years. But what I think this really represents, you know, as I mentioned, our 50-year history investing here in Oregon. We're setting the company up for that future success to continue innovating and investing right here in our backyard. And we know that innovation like this positions positions us for that work. You know, we're investing for the long term through the CHIPS Award. We announced that we're continuing to invest in Oregon to expand and modernize our facilities here. Um, we continue to lean into, you know, some of our community programming and our workforce development programs to ensure that we have the local talent in partnership with the college and universities here in our backyard to support these types of technologies. So we're just really optimistic about this setting us up for success in the future and what that means for the broader region. And what do you think is the most important thing for maybe the general public to know about bringing something like this to Intel? Uh, I think it always surprises folks that there's only three companies left in the world that do research and tech, research and development and manufacturing on leading edge node technology. There's TSMC, there's Samsung, and there's Intel. 
And of course, of those three, we're the only one in the United States in the core research and development work that currently, you know, this high end AUV tool is part of that happens right here in Hillsboro, and that's where it starts. And so everybody that's part of that here should be proud of that and excited for the future opportunities that can bring for Oregonians. Well, very exciting and congratulations on, on getting that in there. I'm sure everybody at Intel is figuring out, you know, they probably don't even know what all they're going to be able to create off of this because that's how those innovations happen. You know, learn one thing leads to another. Uh, very exciting and to have it right here in the region too, right there in Hillsboro. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty big moment. So, uh, Courtney, I want to say thank you very much, you know, for joining us. Thank you, thanks. About this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, so there we go. That was uh, talking to Courtney there from Intel. So getting that bigger you know, overview of what that machine is going to be able to do and, of course, being right here in the region, out there in Hillsboro at the facility. So very interesting on that. But I wanted to find out more about the actual science behind it and as, as far as how it actually works. I mean, there's that laser we mentioned earlier, and we wanted to get into that. So Intel was actually kind enough to share a video that explains that a little bit more. So for those that are interested, this is definitely something you're going to want to check out right here. This incredible machine is as big as a double-decker bus and weighs about as much as a blue whale. To get it from ASML's headquarters in the Netherlands to Intel's Gordon Moore Park in Oregon took more than 250 crates in 43 freight containers loaded in multiple cargo planes and 20 semi-trucks. This new transistor-making tool will forever change the chip industry. It's the world's first high numerical aperture extreme ultraviolet lithography system, also known as high NA EUV. It is likely the most complicated manufacturing tool humans have ever built, and it's the result of 30 plus years of collaboration between Intel, ASML, and its ecosystem of suppliers. And so, yeah, seeing that finally arrive at the dock and having seen you know, over the years the, the drawings, the animations, you know, how exactly we would handle the ship these components and handle them, uh, and yeah, seeing it all come together was, was uh, pretty neat. Lithography machines like ASML's High NA EXE 5000 project circuit patterns onto hundreds of individual chips on a silicon wafer. The more transistors and components crammed onto each chip, the more capable that chip becomes. The essence of Moore's law is to deliver this innovation at roughly the same cost every two years. High NA is an evolution of EUV technology and will help continue Moore's law scaling. ASML's high NA tool is expected to print features up to 1.7 times smaller than existing EUV tools and will enable multiple future technology nodes starting with Intel 14A. This tool is so massive it occupies three floors in the fab. Its laser is strong enough to cut steel. A beam transport transmits the laser pulse into the high NA machine where it slams into tiny droplets of molten tin. Each hot metal droplet only about one third the diameter of a human hair. When that powerful laser, flashing at 50,000 times a second, hits the molten tin, the metal vaporizes into a plasma. This plasma releases light in the extreme ultraviolet range. A collector mirror gathers the EUV light and shoots it to a scanner where it pinballs off extremely precise mirrors that shape the light into a slit that can transfer the patterns of transistors and interconnects. A reticle hosts those patterns and transfers that information through projection optics at a data rate comparable to streaming over 100 movies per second. The projection optics are the key technology that enables high NA. The largest mirror is the flattest surface ever devised by man. If you stretched that, that mirror across the, the entire surface of the planet, uh, the thickness variation would be less than a playing card. The high NA tool will require more than 1,000 electrical and mechanical connections. It will shoot lasers at light speed and heat plasma to nearly 220,000 degrees Celsius, almost 40 times hotter than the surface temperature of the sun. It's, uh, it's amazing to see uh, how, uh, how complicated these, the design is and how amazing it is to see it come to life. Shrinking transistors to atomic size is one of humanity's greatest technology feats. 
HiNA will help Intel Foundry deliver never seen before precision and scalability in chip manufacturing. All right, so there is a little bit more of that science behind it. So uh, really going into some of the details there, are pretty impressive what this machine is. And again, out there in Hillsboro, so certainly something that uh, everybody in the uh, local community is going to be affected by in one way or another, just because of the fact that there are so many employees out there at Intel. So thank you everybody for joining us again. This is Fox 12 Now, and thanks to Intel for sharing that with us and uh, to Courtney for, for that interview. We do have more coming up here on Fox 12 Now. So we're live streaming here every weekday. I wanna remind everybody of that. So if you are watching, we are live and uh, but if you're watching afterward that's great too there's plenty of places to go find our segments coming up at 1 30 today we're going to be talking to eric gordson from around the house northwest about building decks so that's coming up here shortly so if you are live just whatever platform you're on i'll be right back in about 15 minutes or so and uh, i will join you then i'm greg nibbler this is fox 12 now